dragons. Hundreds of them, of all sorts, each ruling its own small domain and making fierce war, or at least tireless intrigues, upon the rest. Hey folks, welcome back to another Realms Lore video. And I have to ask you, how many times would you say per week you are asked about a beer? Oh, well, it depends if I'm in a bar all the time. People want beer all over the place. Yeah, no, uh, uh, a beer. A beer at the place. A beer, the other world, the sister setting world of Toro. Um, I think it's down to twice a week now, but it has been at sometimes uh, many times a day. So this is obviously a pressing need we need to address, hence this video. If you're enjoying these videos, please be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you can know when the next one comes out. So please, please also consider becoming a protector of the realms. If you head on over to patreon.com slash edgreenwood, uh, you can get works in progress, discord roles, exclusive realms lore, and tons of other great stuff. And the support from that is what allows us to continue making these videos for you here. Um, so yeah, please sit back, relax, and it's time to crack a beer. You too can <laughs> with Ed beer. Greenwood. <laughs> oh, enjoy. Yeah. What I can tell thee of my home, a beer. As told to Alminster of Shadowdale by Dulk Merosar, far-traveled halfling adventurer. The world under the steel sky I know, and I've traveled more than most, but am not much for long sea voyages, my stomach misliking them much, hath four continents, and once had five. Laricond is gone as if it never was, and in its place, we now see the boiling sea, named for its ever-shifting whirlpools and strong currents, not for any heat of the water. I mourn, Laracond. I had kin in Tarmaloon Great Port, and shall never see them again. I myself was born in the hidden realm of Neragult, the Great Fens, a land too trackless and soggy for the dragon-born of Thaltil to the west and the humans of hilly Kongor to the east to bother trying to rule. Both know there are dry hillocks in the heart of the swamps where we farm and dwell in our Dura tunnel homes to you, but no army can reach them without being drowned and poisoned by our warriors who can call on the giant leeches they ride and use deadly yuthtil sap on their darts and quarrels. Not that non-hin would spare more than a moment to talk of we hin. Like the Janasi, who are more spoken of than ever seen, we don't matter in the Abir of today. We are the overlooked, the servants, the always there, whereas the Janasi are the never there. So, the largest continent of Abir is Maranth, a great mountainous mass of mountain ranges and high sea cliffs. I'm told it hath the shape from above of a great elongated diamond twisted into a curve from due south around to the northeast, and that it seems striped. By which I mean to say that if this diamond was divided into twelve parallel fingers with narrow, steep-sided mountain ranges between them, those twelve fingers would be chains of high valleys separated by those ranges, and divided at the dale ends by lone peaks that join the parallel ranges. Those valleys teem with vast wild herds of grazing beasts that are preyed upon at will by the rulers of the valleys and indeed of all Morants, hundreds of them of all sorts, each ruling its own small domain and making fierce war, or at least tireless intrigues upon the rest. They duel and raid and betimes fight to the death so that the bones of many fallen are strewn across the mountainsides. But in the main, they make alliances and pacts and vie with each other for influence, keeping them thankfully busy, so they raid the rest of us but little. East of Marantz, across the Ar Serpent Sea, is a long, narrow north-south continent of rolling land, but fewer mountains, the biggest peaks being a coastal range facing Marantz. This landmass is known as Ironser, and its southern two-thirds is hot jungle, and home to all manner of what we deem monsters, including tentacled things and snakes and more than snakes, and beholders and some of those rare Janasi, and some dragonborn who live close to the land. 
the northern third of your answer, north of vast Lake Urange, which I'm told is the shape of a long north-south human kidney, though that's, that's not part of my cuisine, so I must take that on trust, is temperate and largely forested. Though farm clearances have been going on for centuries now, with ever more trees vanishing each season, and is home to some hin and humans ruled in small, petty territories by any number of self-styled lords, some of them wizards and more of them armored bullies, but is dominated by the dwarves beneath our boots, a great elder kingdom known as Stondun, and two splinter realms, Ahizert in the extreme northeast and Boldance to the southeast. Ahizert is home to two outclass clans, the houses of Hesmer and Nornhammer, the first cast out because they insisted on rule by merit and not elders, and the second because their matriarchs pressed for dwarves to turn to doom, that is fungi, agriculture over forging. Boldance broke with the Iron Council of Stondun over the road ahead for Urston or dwarf kind, advocating for peace, trade, and far-faring exploration over forging and controlling supplies of weapons and metals, and making war on non-dwarves sharing the Nardark, what is called the Underdark on Toro. Their reach extends deep, down into the Nardark, and shields Euronsar from the wild deeps, the drow and monster-roamed Nardark beneath Marantz. If ever the strength of the dwarves fades, we may all yet be conquered by the Naren Drow, some of whom worship the Queen of Chaos and listen to her whisperings of bringing war and destruction everywhere. The human-dominated independent towns and cities that crowd the shores of Lake Uranch are called the Cauldron by some, for they are where all manner of folk dwell and dispute together. New ideas are hatched. New innovations and spell experimentations appear, and all too often, some ambitious madhead arises with dreams of conquering others and tries to make war. The east coast of Ronsar is shielded from the open ocean by an archipelago of hundreds of islands, large and small, known as the Kanoth, where all manner of creatures dwell, having their own customs and laws and fierce independence and subsist by fishing with dragnets, the warm and shallow Dun Seas, named for the muddy hue of the rich waters that surround the Connaught. These teem with fish, giant crabs, and eels as big as fishing boats. East of the Dun Seas used to be the Cold Strait, named for the Arctic current that swept ceaselessly through it, and then Laracond, home of Tarmaloon and the Swordlands, and the Dusk Ports, and many Dragon Realms. Since the vanishing, however, this is now the Boiling Sea, through which ocean voyages are perilous and few. Most ships that do sail take the ice run. That is, they thread their ways along a sparse chain of rocky islets to the north of the Boiling Sea, where huge whales and squid sometimes surface to shatter vessels or drag them down, to go around the Chansey Ocean, and reach the second largest continent of Vibir, east of the Boiling Sea, Shear. You will he hear tales of this landmass being ruled by Karshimis the Tyrant from soaring Mount Vor, but in truth, he lorded it over only easternmost Shear. The human and dragonborn inhabited lands now known as collectively as Karshon but formerly independent and much given to warring with each other back when we called them the lands of the rising dragons for the fierce, vain, and often foolish young dragons who ruled them. Nowadays, the grip of the tyrant is much weakened since the blue breath of change took some of his domain away to Toro and twisted much of the rest into the mistlands. A steam-shrouded chaos of hot, fresh winter springs bubbling up from the depths of the earth, active volcanoes and frequent lava flows. The central heart of Shear, perhaps two thirds of it, is what it has always been as far back as hidden histories can be trusted. 
the Dragon Realms. These are domains of humans, halflings, and a few dragonborn, dwarves, and others, ruled by various large and powerful dragons who feud amongst themselves, but for the most part support an uneasy truce to prevent Draconic Young from toppling them in any sort of widespread chain reaction strife. As has happened in the Worm Strife, the second Worm Strife, and the third Worm Strife in the past, the Dragon Realms are prosperous places for the most, with much farming and trade and abundant food, uh, which in turn means abundant mischief. The Dragon Rulers ignore much of it until the Mischief Makers, usually ambitious humans, but sometimes warlike Dragonborn, grow too troublesome. Then the Dragons awaken and descend in devouring destruction, irreverting to ignoring things again. Or so it seems to we Hin, safely to the west in the Sarkost lands. The Sarkost is separated from the Dragon Realms by a knife-edged mountain range called the Tarsark Mountains, after the primordial said to have been torn apart along them long ago, and the reason for so many ghostly or wraith-like varied undead that haunt them. Above one of the highest peaks is where the obelisk-shaped uh, city of Ixvpu, or sometimes pronounced more often just Zifu these days, home of the Kwa, which I understand your human sages of Toril call the Abolesic Sovereignty, hovered until the blue breath of change. Today, the Tarsarks aren't just haunted by undead, they're infested with all manner of monsters who seem to be growing more numerous, so only the largest and busiest of the passes through them, Glander Pass, the Wide Way, and High Veralt, are safe to use. These passes link the westernmost dragon realms with the long, slender hill realm of Karngor, a string of human baronies under the nominal, loose that is, rule of a mountain king who rules from his fortress of Harholt, the Hollow Mountain. Karngor flanks the Tarsark range for hundreds of miles and ends where its hills descend into the Great Fens. That is to say, my home, the Wet Realm, Neragult of the Hin. We claim a territory as long as Karngor, but twice as wide. Though between me and thee, we rule only the southern end of it, the rest being welled and home to eels and serpents and tentacled things of monstrous size who have their own tiny realms and their own disputes, and sane folk disturb them not. West of us is higher ground, the seacoast plateau of Thaldil that shelters us from the ever more frequent storms blowing off the boiling sea. Thaldil is a fractious land of dragonborn who skirmish with each other nigh ceaselessly. They will tell you they all bow to the Vraelin, an overking, but in my hearing, this has mainly meant they swear by him or at him and do as they please, obeying their local lords of each port or high hold, upcountry settlement not on the seacoast, uh, they drop their feuds to hunt to death any dragon foolish enough to land in any part of Thultil, which, like the Fens and Karngor, stretches a long way north and south, but then resume their threats and truces and raids on each other. Which is why we Hin look east to trade and almost never west. There is one last continent of a beer about which I know little, having never been. No one I've ever met has ever been there either, though I dare say dragons and others who fly can reach it readily enough. That far land is known as Loran, and it lies far to the east, across the Oshlar Sea, beyond Karshant, on its own, or not so far west of Marantz, across the Andal Sea. Some say it stretches up into the frozen seas of the Northern Pole, but I cannot tell the truth of sailors' tales, so bound up as they are with accounts of rich treasures on secret islands and wizards dwelling in towers visited by ships that fly and more well-tongued fancies. And that's one of Abirin's view of a beer. So, 
Be wiser if your sister world, readers of Toro. We lack your weave and your elves and your gods, but we gaze on the same moon and its tail sheen by night, and we both share our air with more dragons than is comfortable, do we not? Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around, we're tackling this. This is a preeminent drow house in the city of Menzo Baranz, uh, in the Underdark. And I'm sure a lot of you are planning to visit that city because it is a delicate scenic location at the best of times. So you might want to beware because this house, Bane Ray, yes, that's how they're pronounced, Bane Ray, House Bane Ray, commands fear and respect done so for a long time. Now, uh, unless, of course, you happen to be visiting Menzo Branson either before that house is prominent or after they're gone. It's a terrible thing about dry society. Things are so today, and then they're forgotten. Obliterated. Gone. Don't be like that. Be like the House Bane Ray. <laughs> 